In this exercise, we'll take a deeper dive into the jQuery function that we've been using. This function returns a special JavaScript object whose methods we've been invoking in previous exercises. However, the object also contains an array of DOM elements in the order in which they're created within our web page. So this array is known as the wrapped set. And in this exercise, we're going to take that understanding of this wrapped set that we now have and use it to count the objects that have been returned by the selector that we pass into the jQuery function. If you view this web page in the browser, that you'll see that it consists of an unordered list here with uh, fruit items. So we're going to use our new knowledge of the jQuery function and the fact that it does return uh, this DOM, an, an array of the elements in the DOM, and count the methods that we pass to it. I've opened up exercise underscore one from the chapter four working with wrapped sets directory. Let's take a look at a few things, including the div that contains the list of fruit. So it's right here, this div whose ID is fruit list. And it also contains a paragraph up at the top that currently reads the number of fruits listed followed by a semicolon. So our job will be to use a method of the jQuery function called size that will return the number of DOM elements used by the selector. So the first thing we'll do is underneath the step one comment, you'll see we've already got a jQuery ready method. We'll create a variable to store this quantity uh, of li tags that we're going to grab. So we're going to call it the fruits list size. And that'll be the name of our variable. And when we assign the value of that variable, we'll use the jQuery method. Standard quotes for the selector. Now, the selector is a div whose ID is fruit list. However, what we want to count are the li children of that fruit list. So once again, if you scroll back down here, you'll see there's the ID of the div called fruit list. And there are the li tags that we want to count. So the method of the jQuery object that we want to invoke here is called the size method. So now that we've got this variable that has the length of li tags or the number of li tags in this context, we want to go ahead and display that inside of this p tag right here. So again, we're going to invoke the jQuery method and pass to it the selector that we want to manipulate with more jQuery code, and that is the first instance of a p tag. So that's our selector. The method that will place text inside of this p tag that we've just queried or located is the text method. We'll go ahead and add our terminator there, and then we'll write the text that we want. So we want to display the string number of fruits listed, colon, and then we're going to go ahead and concatenate that with the variable that we declared above, fruits list size. If you preview this in the browser, you should now see number of fruits listed is 35. Now we'll go one step further and we'll deal with this second paragraph where we'll want to indicate the number of fruits listed without including the berries. So if you scroll back to that list, you'll see there's a nested list here. So inside of our first UL tag, we have LIs for apples, apricots, bananas, cherries, grapefruits, and so forth. But this first nested list is for berries, and we don't want to count these LI tags. So our first bit of jQuery counted all of the LI tags that were descendants of that div. Now we want to calculate only those that are not uh, berries. So underneath the comment, for step five, let's create another variable to store this information, and we'll call this variable fruit list not berries size. So the key here is going to be the selector that we pass. We still want to invoke the size method of the jQuery object to return the size of the selector's elements. Now the selector's elements is where it gets a little bit tricky. We are still inside of a div called fruit list, and we still want to count descendants of that fruit list that are li tags. However, 
what we want to exclude is going to be placed inside of this not function. What we pass here is the elements within the current context, which is the fruit list, that we don't want to count. And that is li tags that are children of ul. So that would be those in the nested list. So here's the li that are children of ul that we don't want to count. We're still invoking the size method here though. Okay, so we'll just need to make sure that we quote that value and place the closing quote right here before we go ahead and invoke the size method. Now once again we want to display that variable within the page. So we invoke some more jQuery here, quote the selector which is the p tag. This time we're passing in the index number which is 1, our first paragraph. Because we are grabbing the p tag with this equals function, this function expects an index number, so we are using um, zero base counting here. So the index number of the first paragraph here would be zero, and the second one would be one. So we're passing in the index number one to the equal method. Then we'll go ahead and invoke the text method because we're trying to assign some text here, and that's going to read the number of fruits listed. Uh, not including berries. And we'll go ahead and concatenate that with the value of our variable. If you preview this in the browser, the value that uh, it gets calculated should be 24. But our, our little indication of what we're counting here says not including berries. But what we're really not including is any nested li tags which are inside of ul tags. So that includes a bit more than berries because there's more nested lists here. Cantaloupe, honeydew, the melon section, and the mixed fruit section. So you might want to modify that to say not including berries or melons or mixed fruit. In this exercise, you learned a bit more about the jQuery object and the fact that it returns this array of DOM elements. In particular, we learned how to count the items that we're passing in by way of the selector.